morning everybody. I hope you're having a really fantastic week. Um, I am coming to you from Castle Hill. Um, it's a really unique area as you can see and it's uh, not that far out of Christchurch and to be honest I haven't been here that many times to do uh, landscape photography. So I got up really early and I drove out here and I've um, climbed up the side of this bank here so I've got the view of the um, rocks up behind me here but also in the background uh, over here the sun is just starting to rise and it's, there's some amazing clouds in the sky and the lights catching the clouds so what I'm doing is, um, is I'm doing a panorama with my 16 millimeter lens just to capture this entire landscape back here it's um, looking really beautiful but what I'll do is I'll run you through the best way to do panoramas so after you get back to your office or home or wherever you go to after this to, to edit your photos that it's a seamless stitch together. Okay so key things to remember when doing a panorama is that your tripod is absolutely level and that if you've got an electronic level in your camera like my one does that you check that that is also level as well because when you get back into Photoshop uh, if your photos aren't level then your pitch is going to look like this it's going to be on an angle and it's going to make it really hard to crop so the leveler it is the better it's going to be for Photoshop to try and stitch it together basically another really key thing to do as well is to allow for room either side of the photos that you're taking so you want to make sure that when you're turning your tripod head and taking each of the photos that you make sure that you include if you're going left to right for instance that you include some of the image from the left that you just took that way um, Photoshop when it goes to stitch it together it has enough of the previous photo to be able to create a seamless stitch if you've left a gap somewhere because you've gone too far to the right it's not going to know how to stitch it together and you're going to have a, a gap in your panorama basically so it's super important to remember that you have the uh, room either side of each image that you're taking also and this is a key thing to remember is that if you're shooting manually which you should be in panoramas 98% of the time that you pan your camera across the scene to make sure that you're not getting any overexposed areas because if you're shooting in one direction and you've set the aperture and the shutter speed up for the frame that you're currently looking at you could go to the right and then realize halfway through it that the, the final photo on your right hand side is completely overexposed because it faces towards the sun for instance and so you really want to make sure that you pan across your entire image and check your histogram and make sure that you're not uh, blowing out the highlights or making sure that it's not too dark so trying to get a shutter speed and trying to get a uh, uh, exposure that works across the entire frame that's super important to make sure that you do that guys I don't think the Sun is going to do what I want it to do this morning it's just it's just way too cloudy so I'm not going to get any direct light on the um, rocks like I wanted so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head up uh, behind me here try and get a little higher um, and see if I can get um, a much wider shot of the area and I also have an idea of trying to maybe capture some of the um, smaller white wildflowers that are actually um, blooming at the moment I think it might make a for a really um, cool foreground so I'm gonna head up there and see if I can find any more compositions um, here at Castle Hill so I managed to find the scene that I want to shoot uh, which I mentioned earlier, so the, so the flowers in the foreground and then the amazing um, Castle Hill rocks in the background. Um, the 
thing about doing a shot like this is that you you'll need a wide angled lens so you can try and capture all of the scene and you want to make sure that you're focusing that composition um, equally on the background and equally on the foreground to try and get a nice uh, consistent uh, composition throughout at least that's what I like to do with my ones and uh, what you also need to do as well is focus stack so you will focus on the immediate foreground so the flowers that are right in front of you then you want to focus around two-thirds of the way into the frame to make sure that you captured that middle area and then you want to focus on the background as well because then when you get back into Lightroom you can then open up those three shots in Photoshop and you can uh, stitch them together using masking and that way you'll have a nice um, in focus composition where the flowers in the foreground are nicely in focus the midground is in focus and the background is in focus as well the most important thing to remember, and I've mentioned this in a past video as well, is that when you're doing this type of shot, set your aperture and, sh and set your shutter speed beforehand. Because you don't want to be changing your aperture at all throughout the scene. If you do that, then what it does is it minutely changes the magnification um, of the shot. It can actually move things just ever so slightly and when you try and put that um, together in Photoshop using the layer masks it's going to look warped and it's going to look weird so make sure you leave your aperture as it is and make sure you leave your shutter speed as it is when you do focus stacking. Okay so I thought I'd just run you through this real quickly. So here I am magnified in on the uh, immediate flower in the foreground which you'll be able to see is nicely in focus, so I'll zoom out and then I'll take that shot. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just raise up the um, focal point, which is the square on my screen here. Zoom in so it's around two thirds of the way into the frame and then I'm going to focus there. There we go, that's nicely in focus. Zoom back out. Take the shot, and then I'm going to go back up to the very top here with my focal point. I'm going to zoom in, and then I'm going to focus there. That looks nice. Zoom back out, take the shot. And there you go. Three different shots all focusing on different parts of the scene and that'll mean that you'll get a nice shot that's completely in focus from background to foreground. that's this video um, I hope you guys come out here uh, Castle Hill is a truly amazing place and it really affords you the opportunity to get some really unique landscape photography shots um, it is a really busy area um, especially during summer uh, so make sure that you come here early like I did and no doubt you'll be rewarded with a, and a really um, amazing sunrise uh, if you've got any comments or feedback for me on the photos that I've taken in this video then make sure you leave a comment below. Uh, if you like the video then I'd really appreciate it if you could leave me a like. And if you want to see more videos like this then make sure you subscribe to my channel. Otherwise guys, I'll see you on the next one.